Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video and in this video I'm going to show you something really interesting that will help you a lot. There is no need of installing anything at all, all you need is just a GitHub account and you can set up the thing. So I was just amazed that so many people are not aware of the things that now you need just is a browser and you can work in your office laptop, work laptop, library, anywhere at all. And not only that, your project actually directs gets into your portfolio at GitHub. This is so amazing and interesting. I haven't talked much about it, but this is an amazing tag. And in this video, I'll show you that how you can set up Node.js, we'll work through with the MongoDB as well, and I'll show you how you can connect both of them. And no, this is not MongoDB Atlas. You don't need to create any other account. Although on this channel, I do have a video where I walked you through that how you can actually have MongoDB Atlas being connected, but why we need that if you're just making a basic project and you can have everything installed, big thanks to the Docker containers that we are running all around the places. So let me walk you through. It's going to be really simple and I'll walk you through all the details and some gotchas where you might make mistakes. So this is amazing. If you enjoy these kinds of video, make sure you let me know in the comment section you want more such installation videos which are handy and short or maybe you want more such of deployment video. I love to do that as well. So let me know if you are enjoying that. Let me know in the comment section. Based on that, I'll make videos. And subscribe is a must if you are not yet done. <laughs> All right. Uh, so this is our basic GitHub page. I've already logged into this. So you can see you can directly create the code space, but I don't recommend to do so because you will face some of the issues if you directly go ahead and create a code space. But rather, what you can do is just go ahead and create a new repository. So let's go ahead and call this one as YouTube. Uh, YouTube dash uh, node dash mango. Yeah, really long name, but we're going to go with that. And description as uh, simply a test repo to configure, configure if I can write that, configure node, oh man, I need to learn how to type, <laughs> probably keyboard is not at its place, uh, node.js and mongodb, yeah, that's, that's good enough for us, db, there we go. Now, public or private is not going to bother you, what's going to bother you is do you add a readme file or not. Make sure if you're using everything just in the browser, just go ahead and use add this readme file and just click on create repository. Once this repository is being created, you don't need to actually connect this with your local system or anything at all. Since everything is there, what we need, all we can do is just simply go ahead, click on the code and create on code main space. Now just clicking on this doesn't mean that you will have Node.js environment and the MongoDB environment. You need to actually do configure it a tiny bit more. And uh, this is going to take just a few seconds based on time. Sometimes it takes a lot more time than this. And obviously I'll fast forward the places where it will take too much of the time. Uh, so there we go, our workspace is ready, but this is just an empty container. It doesn't do anything. It's just obviously a Docker container, but you can see the Docker file because it's the basic Docker file. So they don't display this much. Uh, what we need is a node and mongodb environment so again our friendly command command shift p or control shift p to have this and then just type container so it will give you all the container related commands that are available to you for example app dev add dev container configuration file fully rebo build and all of this we want the first one because we want to add the container files so modify the active configuration or new i want new one obviously this is the start of the project so once you have selected this, now you can select what environment you want. Uh, you definitely can go for the C++ and other environment. If you want me to showcase that and proper configuration of that, let me know in the comment section. I'll do that as well. Uh, just search for Node.js. There's a basic Node.js with Azurite, with MongoDB, with Postgres SQL. If you want me to set up the Postgres and connect that, I'll do that. Comments <laughs> all for that. In this one, we'll go for a MongoDB and Node.js container. Uh, we'll go with the default 18 and we don't need any of this. So we're going to just go ahead and say, hey, you know, OK. Now, this actually is going to add some configuration, of course, Docker configuration for you. and It's going to rebuild the environment as well. Now, usually this rebuild uh, takes a little bit of time, but in this case, this was damn fast. And you can see there is a Docker compose file in which we have this app and we have this DB. So two of the services are being added for us. This is all in the dev container. We usually don't touch the dev container, but just to show you what's happening behind the scene is all we are going up here. Uh, so we open up the DB. We have the Mongo being installed. Make sure the image is Mongo and this will always be like that. And we have our app being Node.js environment. Now, this is not enough. We need to actually test and set up the MongoDB connection with the app because right now this is a separate container. This is a separate container. They're not talking to each other. So again, hit command shift P and just type Mongo, uh, Mongo, 
and uh, nope, nothing like that. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and rebuild this. Sometimes this will happen to you as well. So probably you need to rebuild this. So command shift P and again hit the container, container and probably we need to rebuild this container. So what we're going to do is rebuild the container and yes, please rebuild. If you don't see any MongoDB command or like that, that means things are there, configuration files are there, but your image or the container is not yet set accordingly to that. Otherwise, the MongoDB should be there. This is going to take some time, so let me pause the video till it just finish do the basic stuff. All right, so we are back after a tiny bit pause, and yes, this takes a little time. So now this is all done, the container is there, and you will find automatically as you reload, this will come in case this doesn't come or accidentally you close it out, no need to worry. Again, our friend is Command Shift P, or if you are on Windows, Control Shift P. Uh, this opens the command palette. By the way, uh, the command palette you can open up from settings and command palette, uh, same thing. Now we can go ahead and look for Mongo. Now you see the Mongo related commands because the container is built around that. So just click on a MongoDB connect and once this is done, now you actually cannot connect the MongoDB just by hitting the connect. It sometimes fails and doesn't work. So what you want is click on this open form and just click on connect and now the both containers are talking to each other. You can see that uh, if you go ahead and close this, you'll see that connected at localhost. So this is all just on same network. This is a almost like, not almost, it is like uh, having installed all the system on the localhost. So what we're going to do here is, now let's test out whether these are properly installed and connected or not. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and say npm init uh, dash y to get all the basics and default options. And we're going to go ahead and have a start script that simply go ahead and uh, run this file, which is going to be index.js. And obviously, we need a command to run it, which will be simply node. You can use node mon or whatever you like. So save this and this is all good. Now we need to install a couple of packages and dependencies because we want to connect with that. So we're going to go ahead and say npm install. And obviously, we're going to be using mongoose. And let's just say we want to have an express as well because Maybe you want to write some APIs using Express or something. So we'll just go ahead and do this. I won't be writing much of the routes or everything. I just want to connect with the database to check whether the database is getting connected properly or not. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and create two files. I'll not create any directory structure like that or something. I uh, will just go ahead and say app.js and another file will be index.js. That will be our root file and uh, index.js. All right, so app.js, uh, in the app.js, we are not doing anything much. We'll just create an express app and we'll export it out. So <laughs> nothing much there. So let's go ahead and say import express. There we go. And let's go ahead and create an app with this express. And there we go. And let's go ahead and say export, export default app. So there we go. We don't have anything, literally not even a single route in this app. And this is probably it that we want to work with that. Now, all we need is to connect with the database. So let's go into index.js for connection. Mongoose will help us. So we're going to go ahead and say uh, mongoose. Just go like this. Let's also import app that will be coming up from the current directory app.js. Sometimes I have noticed that if you don't write this .js at the end, usually it's not required in your local host. Uh, but on this code space, it actually creates a problem. So watch out for this one. I faced some of the issues with that. Now let's go ahead and connect with the database. The classic way to connect with the database is to create an iffy. So this is our function and we run it like this. So let me go ahead and actually increase the font size. Probably 24 is good enough. Uh, there we go. Uh, good enough. So let's go ahead and create an iffy like this. So this is my simple method and uh, this is going to run the method. This is how we create an FA. Now this is a database call, so our database connection call, it's going to be a sync just like this, and we are going to just create an arrow function. There we go. So now this is a proper FA. In order to have a database connection, obviously we are going to wrap this up in the try and catch block. First of all, let's handle the catch part because it's the easiest one. I'll not create any custom class for the errors or something. Right now we just want to have a check of the connection. So console log, and in the console log, not log, let's go ahead and use error. Feel free to use uh, console log as well. No problem there. And we're going to go ahead and say, hey, error is actually uh, error. You can definitely go ahead and extract dot message or something. I'll just go ahead and use as it is. I need a comma here. There we go. And uh, let's also throw the error. 
All right. So basics are done. And now let's go ahead and see that how we can connect with the database. Connection is pretty easy. All we got to do is use the mongoose and just use connect. And now the most important part is how we can set up the URL. The URL that we are going to use is pretty, not pretty, it's actually absolute basics that anybody can have into this one. Uh, this is since you're onto a local host, just go ahead and write your uh, local host URL here. For example, MongoDB actually gives you its own protocols. So we're going to go ahead and say MongoDB, just like you connected on localhost. Localhost. And again, 27017. And whatever the database name, let's just say we call it as uh, Git Setup. Git Setup. Git Setup is our database name. Uh, so that is all. That is all it takes to actually go ahead and connect with database. And since this is going to take some time, uh, let's go ahead and await this. This might take some time. So, all right. Once this is done, we're going to go ahead and do a log that, hey, uh, DB connected, all in uppercase, because that's an important statement. Uh, all right. So, this should uh, do all the things. Now, let's also listen on some port. For listening, we are going to obviously use app. Uh, so let's go ahead and create a method for that. We'll just create a method directly here. So const on listening. And that obviously is going to be an arrow function, just like this. And all it's going to do is console log. And we're going to say listening on port. Uh, we'll hard code the value 5000, but feel free to just use any other port. Now, since the method is done, let's go ahead and listen. App is going to listen on the port. Uh, first, let's go ahead, app.listen. And we need to provide a port. Let's go ahead and provide 5000 to this. And what method or the callback? So we are not providing any callback. We rather are providing on listening here. Uh, make sure you provide a reference only, not the methods. All right, basics. All right, so this is all good. Uh, hopefully that's all. That's all it is required. I'm not checking the errors for app, not checking any of the event listening like app.on error. I'll not do that. That's very basic. Everybody can do that. This is not a tutorial for uh, app development or API development, rather it's just a tutorial for connection. Now I can do is npm start because my script is there and probably there are some statement uh, mongoose is having. So let's see what is... Uh, type module. Okay, my bad. Uh, what we need to do is come up here. This might happen to you as well. Uh, we need to set up a type that is going to be module. Should be happy now. Let's go ahead and see and run this one more time. npm start. Still one more error. And it says, hey, now you have an error. Uh, MongoDB with MongoDB colon slash slash. There are some issues. Let's go ahead and check this. Uh, my bad. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you might have noticed that already. Uh, save this. All right, let's run this this time. And there we go. Final after a couple of debugging, you can see that now we are listening on to the database. It's connected. And what's additional thing about it is if you just go up here, you can see that the database is connected and you can see and visualize it as, as, at the same time. And it shows that, hey, it is being connected. You can add more schemas, can visualize it a little bit. But I think this video has helped you a tiny bit so that now you don't have to install anything on your system, especially the database installation can be a little bit painful, but everything is now in here. Now, all you have to do is just come up here and make sure you commit all of these things. Uh, I'll just say that, hey, let's first stage them up. So all is being staged. Uh, there's a lot. We definitely need to add a file, git ignore, to make sure that we don't have this one. And then just put a commit message and then make sure you push it as well. And that's it. I'll obviously delete this repo. But you get the idea that how you can actually connect this and it's super easy and can work with that. If you need more such tutorial for the environment setup or the deployment on some production like AWS, GCP or uh, Hostinger, maybe DigitalOcean, anything, just let me know in the comments and I'll surely do that. Let's go ahead and catch up in another such video. Hope you have already subscribed to the channel.